Hello folks, Prairie Fiddler coming to you from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Today I have something that's uh, that I haven't tried before and I thought it might be kind of interesting to uh, to show you my latest violin or what I'm working on here. Um, I have a, a Justin Durazzi violin that I picked up that was uh, it <clears throat> was a uh, was in disuse, had been obviously by the strings and the fittings on it, had been sitting around for quite a long time. It's uh, circa 1920, probably made in France. Uh, Justin Durazzi was the son of Honor Durazzi, and I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's uh, uh, they were violin makers in France. Uh, Honor died in 1850. And his son Justin carried on until 1880 when he too died. So, um, as was quite often in the in those days, the the uh, the rights to this design were sold to a workshop in France, and they continued to make them probably until the 1930s. So, uh, this one here, it's it's very sound. It's in very good condition. The only uh, flaw that I could find on the whole thing is just a, a very tiny crack right there and I think it I'm not sure if that corner had maybe uh, broken off and was put back on I'm not sure but it's uh, it, nonetheless it doesn't affect the sound so uh, by the uh, by the wear on the fingerboard this violin had seen a lot of use and so I had to actually the, the grooves from the strings and the fingerboard were so deep I had to actually dress the fingerboard which means that I had to reduce it down to um, to get rid of those uh, those uh, uh, wear marks and this is a this is a tool that you use that has the the correct arch for a fingerboard so I had to uh, you put a, a piece of sandboard on there sandpaper on there and you reduce it until you've got you, until you've gotten rid of all those uh, those uh, troughs in there, the nut was was gone, or was a just an old piece of wood, so I had to fix that. Um, so I I put it together, and uh, with just some old parts, I was pretty excited to see what it sounded like, and I just kind of modified an old bridge to uh, to get it working. But what I did invest in was a good set of Daddario um, Kaplan ammo strings and uh, they are they're supposed to be a kind of a softer string I really like them actually and they seem to fit with this violin quite well so when I got it uh, in playing condition I was it took a well, probably a week or so to get it uh, to get the sound to come come uh, start to come back again and I was just totally blown away by the uh, <laughs> by the quality of it and the and the sound it was just beautiful. So I've decided that uh, I'm going to invest a, a bit in, in parts, not a bit, but uh, put some decent quality parts on it. So I bought a, a Despew 3 tree bridge and I've, I've got that fitted uh, to the violin, but I can't finish it until I get the strings on and, and then I can uh, adjust the, uh, the height of the strings. But what I've done, what I've decided to do, and I have never done this before, uh, these old violins have uh, the the standard now for uh, for uh, uh, bevel or angle on the on the pegs is uh, one to thirty, and on older violins it's actually greater than that. So so uh, they have a, a sharper uh, taper on them, and the pegs on it, um, eh, they're working, but but uh, I decided that I was going to put some Wittner geared pegs on it. And I suppose some uh, um, traditionalists, um, purists might call that heresy. But uh, this is a violin that I hope to keep for myself and, and, and play. So uh, the Wittner geared pegs are at, uh, they're geared to eight and a half to one. And the, the advantage to that, obviously easier tuning, uh, but it eliminates the need for fine tuners 
on the uh, on the tailpiece. And right now, like a standard is a is a tail a fine tuner on the E string. Now this should be able to eliminate that. And I've seen uh, trials and and tests where the fine tuners on the tailpiece really have a profound effect on uh, sound production. So, anyways, uh, this uh, this bridge here re they retail at around forty bucks. So it's a it's a pretty it's a it's an investment for a bridge. Um, the uh, ge the geared pegs retail around I think it's one hundred and forty dollars, one hundred and thirty, hundred and forty, uh, and yeah. So I'm going to give that a try. So what I've uh, discovered or what I've learned, I've watched some, some videos on installing these, is that, so you have a, a, an, a middle part here that turns with the gears. These parts stay stationary. Once you fit them into the peg hole, they don't turn. But when you turn the, uh, the peg head, the gears turn this middle part here, and that's where the strings go in. So what I'm told, or what I, what I see is that, uh, there's a there's a kind of a shoulder here and that is to line up with the inside edge for the e-string here uh, this would line up that uh, shoulder would line up with the inside of that of that uh, uh, peg box so you can see if you put the uh, like this is a standard 1 to 30 bevel uh, peg reamer so if you put that in here, and typical with uh, with older violins, you'll see that there's a when it bottoms out at, on the other end, there's a bit of a, a bit of play here. So that means that the taper on this peg box is actually greater than one to thirty. So the first thing I need to do is, uh, or, or what I what will happen, I guess, is that when I ream that hole out, it'll ream it to a one to thirty, and then. I'll uh, install this first peg. So I will uh, start on this. I'm a little nervous because it's a uh, it's actually quite a valuable violin. So I'm uh, I don't think I'll do any any irreparable damage to it anyways. And this hopefully will will make it a a much more valuable and desirable instrument. So we go very slow, very very slow and uh, continuously fit this this peg in here and you're told the other thing uh, for installation and for usage is never ever pull on the peg head because that could uh, uh, pull the gears apart in there so uh, always pull on the the, uh, the the peg itself or push from the other end so anyways i will continue here and I'll only fit one peg just to give you a demonstration here on uh, on what I'm doing. That's the thing with uh, most luthier work. There's a lot of skill and, and uh, knowledge involved, but it's... Uh, from what I can see, it's about 80 or 90% patience. So, very slow. Everything you do on these things, see now this uh, the end of the peg has, has popped out the other side. So I've got to go uh, about another, another six millimeters or so. Very slow. Yeah, if this was actually an original Justin Durazi violin, it would probably be worth tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, obviously because it's a, a copy, it's worth probably 
a tenth of that, I would say. Let's take a wee bit off at a time. It pops out about a, a millimeter further every every time I take some off. Should actually put a mark on this roughly where it should how deep it should go in. Like I said, those uh, Kaplan uh, the Dario Kaplan ammo strings they have an ammo and a vivo, um, and the ammo is the softer. mellow string the vivo is supposed to be a little brighter and uh, it's the first time I used it it's kind of it was kind of a just a, a whim I was standing there looking at the at the rack of strings at the local shop here and I had, actually I've used uh, Eva Parazzi greens and uh, golds and that's kind of what I was looking at or maybe obligato and uh, these things popped out at me. I thought, oh, what the heck? And they were a little bit cheaper too. I think they were around $115 for the set. Whereas Eva's are about uh, anywhere from $140 to $200. I think I paid, I paid $200 for a set of Eva Golds. And they are very nice. Um, but I have seen, I have had violins where they're not necessarily the thing to have either. That's it. That's as deep as we want that one. Ooh. So yeah, that's uh, that's one peg. One peg installed. So now the uh, the next step would be to to. Uh, Cut the peg off even though it's uh, plastic and cut this peg off and uh, finish the end of it and then there you have it so that's uh, that's one peg installed on this Justin Durazzi violin I'm pretty excited about it and uh, we'll see how it turns out maybe when it's all done I'll play you too thanks for watching and uh, happy fiddling we'll see you again